Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? My garden? Well, we are making some progress here on this vegetable garden. It might be a little hard to see because everything is so tiny, but since we're about to start winter, I figured we would do a Florida winter garden vegetable garden tour, plus make a game plan for seed starting. So if you're looking for some inspiration on what to get into your Florida vegetable garden, or you're looking to start planning your December, or as always, if you just wanna hang out, that's what we're gonna be doing today. So off to the beds. First, I'd like to say, I am not one of those people who is really good at saying I'm doing a good job, but I would like to say, I feel like I kinda of did a good job. Do you feel like you've been doing a good job? If you do, let me know. And I wanna celebrate you too because I did a good job seed starting this year in ground, in beds. I'm really proud of me. So let me show you what's going on. It's really good. The vegetable garden bed. So many things are coming up. Can you see them? Can you see them? No, really, can you see them? Cause it's like, they're very tiny right now. Very tiny. It's been just under, I think a month it's been three or four weeks since we got these seeds in the ground. So if you're looking for that context, that's about how far along and probably about five weeks since we put the transplants in the ground. Is it been that long? Wait, let's go check the planner. Okay, so it's been about four weeks since we got this done. And I think maybe we planted and fall starts. So that would have been right here. So yes, it's about four weeks since this all happened. First up is the northeast bed. Ooh, ah. And we're gonna start right here with our lettuces. If you remember, I was starting a different way. Instead of doing like a trench, I put everything in one little spot and then I can just go ahead and thin these. Not thinning them quite yet, but I'm going to very soon. But then I didn't have to worry about weird spacing being created by the trenches. And you can see here's our little lettuces all popping up. Look at them, they're so cute. These ones were the sweet Valentine romaine. And you can see versus the plan. One, two, three, four, looking good. And then over here, one, oh, I seeded a lot in this one, huh? Two, three, and four. Sweet Valentine, good job, Romaine. And you can see there's like a little bit of a reddish tinge on them and that's what they're supposed to have. So that's kind of cool. And I think it goes well with the other crop that's in this one, which is, I believe the Detroit beets. Now we can see in this one, the Detroit red beets. Oh, look at them. They're looking so good. And the trench method has worked very well for them. You can see there's some like little dimpled areas. You might say, what's going on here? Uh, squirrels. Squirrels is what's going on right here. But in general, overall, they've seeded and I did a pretty good job of spreading them out. So that is four weeks out. They have been doing really good. And right behind those, these are the Texas Granos, doing very, very nice. Look at all those little onions coming up, which is really, really good. Because as you guys know, we use so many onions. So having lots of onions coming up, yay. And the same on this side. Lots of beets, lots of onions. We got some gap areas, so we might want to fill these, but actually with the way that you're supposed to thin these, this is actually about the right spacing, so it's not terrible that there's a little gap there. We have a little gap here with the beets, same thing. It's within the spacing guidelines that you would find in the planner. As a friendly reminder, oh my gosh, they're so small. This pine needle, it's too much. <laughs> So the beets are looking good. So, so far, everything we see in this bed is looking really, really good, except for one thing. And that is those fairy Morris green onion seeds. As you guys can see, remember we put them in between the pepper plants and not one has come up. And I will tell you, that is the same case in every single bed, not one has come up. I think the whole packet was bad. It might've been an old packet. I'm not really sure. I'll have to go back and look, um, but it's a no-go. So we won't use those at all. But I do have some green onion seeds. If you guys remember from Southern Exposure, I had like a couple different varieties. So we're gonna need to put that on our list in a second of things we definitely need to reseed in the Northeast bed. And actually all of them is we're gonna need to reseed green onions to go in between. But when it comes to our fall transplants, look at this, dino kale, it's looking good. This one actually looks really good. If I was gonna keep one of the two, it would be this one, cause it's like nice and straight, doesn't have this weird curve thing going on. And uh, it looks happy, it looks healthy. 
So that's Lancinato, AKA Dino Kale. And then these are, what are these? Are these Cubanelles? Yes, these are Cubanelles. And you can see we're already starting, even with all this cold weather, to get some little flowers on these. Now remember, I am a zone 10. So if your peppers are not doing this, don't be mad. We just stay a lot warmer. There's pros and cons to staying warmer. Right now it's a pro. <laughs> Later in the year when it's the summer, it'll be a con. So, you know, everyone's got their things that go more easily. But that's exciting. We got Cubanelle peppers that are looking really happy. We've got onions that are going, which will eventually become onion greens, which can go in green onion soup, which we love. We got beets for our, our smoothie. We've got lettuces growing. I feel really good about the northeast bed. So all I need to do is I need to remember, and I'll note it once we get probably to something else I need to fill in. We'll note that we need to, yeah, all the green onions got to be reseeded. She is who has been trying to keep all the squirrels away from my beds because the squirrels have been doing a really good job of doing things like this. I don't know if this is obvious, but this is like a hole. It's like a huge divot right here. They're trying to plant all the acorns. And for some reason they think the acorns should go in these beds. They do not belong in these beds. <laughs> they can plant them anywhere else in the yard. They really shouldn't be planting them everywhere, but whatever. They need, to, they need to chill out. So let's check out the Northwest bed. Now a little bit different than the Northeast bed is here we had beets, but this one we actually had broccoli. So we had Walthams and Dechicos. I think this is, let's see, this is Waltham, Dechico, Waltham. And look at those ones, four weeks. Those look really good. Wow. This is the Waltham, I think 29s from Southern Exposure. Looks so, so good. The Tico's a little bit slower to get going, but that's what I noticed when I started them in trays too, but also looking really nice. And then this is another round of Waltham. Um, <laughs> less looking good, but probably from the fact that this giant hole that's been dug by the squirrel. So I'm going to call it a win. They seem to be doing okay for right now. It looks like a lot, some of them got a little stressed from this hole that was being dug, but we'll take it. We'll take it. They're happy. And then you can see all the onions back here looking really good. And if you remember, those are the seeds I spilled. So we got broccoli seeds starting back there. And if I need to, I could take that and put it here if we still have problems. We don't have problems. We just have solutions around here. <laughs> now a little bit different story. Here we have the Cosmo Romaine lettuce. So it's a little bit different variety. So we can see we started really well there. That one seems rather close, but okay. Then we have one set there and then nothing. But I don't think this is much, because if we look over here, uh, I clearly seeded a lot in this section. Then we got seeds, seeds, seeds. So a little bit slower to start in the corner area. That might be what happened here, except for also there's still this giant hole. So I'm guessing what happened. Oh, wait, hi, I see you coming up. So we do have one starting right here. So whatever ones I might've put right here, um, the this, this happened. So we all accept that this is probably the problem. It's not a Southern exposure seed thing. This is probably a squirrel thing. And Miss Shiloh, good girl. She's so good. She's looking for squirrels right now. She knows they like to hide back there. And then in the middle we have, let's see if I can remember. Oh, these are the jalapeno, 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 jalapenos. So this bed was jalapenos and they have bounced back. I mean, all of these looked terrible when I put them in. And I mean, look at that. That looks pretty happy looks nice. Look at that shade of green. If you remember in this, these all had like a very yellowish nutrient deficient green going on. Um, you can see these ones look really squiggly and crazy. I definitely feel like these are being worthy of replacing. That might be worthy replacing that one. Yeah. So I think we should probably reseed jalapenos. What are your thoughts? These just don't look very happy. The dino kale, this one you can see kind of grew because I was so bad with it, but overall, otherwise, this is fine. Though I think it's worth reseeding in place because they just, they do come along. But the leaves feel really nice and hearty. They're really doing a good job now that they're <laughs> on nutrition and water regularly. <laughs> and then over here, this is one of the Waltham broccolis. This is doing great. This one's doing great. Looks like we might have a little bit of somebody, but now we're dropping below 60. So any caterpillar action is going to be really stopping at this point for the next few days. And if we stay there long enough, it'll really deter. So a lot of this will start to slow down. So I'm not as worried. Uh, this to Chico. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> it's so sad. I do feel 
that that did she go we should definitely consider reseeding i think a few things in here we need to reseed i they just i'm what i'm watching with how the sun's setting each day um it's pretty early that this bed's getting shaded especially on this westernmost section so i think getting some good starts for plants not putting you know ones that are super stressed out in there probably a good idea so let's call it starting one to chico um i think it's worth just throwing dino kales in and then actually seeding in place some of those jalapenos but let's now go check out our southwest bed so if you all remember we kind of did a mirroring thing so we had beets over there and beets over there so this is our southwest corner versus our northeast and beets are doing really well they actually kind of liked the little bit more shade i guess on this side uh squirrel the squirrel right here you can tell you it's easier probably to see in person but there's like a nice little divot for them trying to go and put acorns in this bed and then look at those texas granos we got good starts and you can see it looks like someone bit the heads off of some of them or maybe they're still popping up we'll give it a minute but also i don't really think i need to put in more texas granos but these detroit beets look good and then these are sweet valentine romaines and boom, looking nice. A little bit slower to start than some of the other varieties, but that could be also because of all the shade. So we'll take that. And then we have Cubanelles over here. Uh, a little bit of budding. Overall, look okay. The leaves definitely look way better. Lots of ant aphid action on this one. Might need to just take this out and call it a day. And then that dino kale, very similar. You see it jumped over, but is it actually rooting? No. Okay, so we might just want to restart that one. Texas Grano is looking really good here. I wonder if someone was digging a hole. Hmm. <laughs> Beets look pretty good. Four weeks out. And then Sweet Valentine one, two. Can't find anything else. And then there's one right here. So we need to put some more Sweet Valentines on the southern section of the... What is this? Southwest bed. But I mean, overall, I feel like this is like a 75, 90%, like that's an A, right? That's an A. So, and like about 50% of our problems are me from being really slow to get those transplants out, which that's not gonna be a problem in the long term, it's just this season. That's okay, we'll get them restarted. And we can see that seeding in place has been overall pretty good, minus Mr. Squirrel, but Shiloh's been doing a good job. That's like her day job, she enjoys it. She just sits at that door, she barks and cries at Ben and I, and then we let her out on the patio so she can tell all the squirrels that they need to go and they need to get out of here. And the other nice thing is all the birds have been loving hanging out on this trellis and then they swoop in and then eat things that are on the bed so yay pest control and then let's check out this bed and then we'll check the metal bed huh so this is our southeast bed you can see texas grano is doing overall really good we have a pretty big gap right here i might need to throw a couple seats in here it looks like we have a gap here also so maybe throw in and then here we have the opposite so de chico waltham runaway <laughs> the Chico. These look like they got more pest stuff happening to them. So maybe we need it. Waltham's a little bit stronger for us. And then we got the butter crunch lettuce. So one, two, three, four, looking good. And over here, one, two, three, four. And then the De Chico's over here look a lot better actually. No Waltham. Wait, nope. No, no Walthams. And then the Chico here, <laughs> runaway onions. And then the onions here are just like way more scattered. So I think we need to reseed this side for sure. Cause this looks like I lost my mind at one point <laughs> and just like, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened here. The kale looks good, but it's that same problem. We kind of went and then we came up. So I'll probably just reseed this for funsies. And then we can see the hisei peppers, ahi dulces. They look happy, healthy, but they tend to do really well in like crazy hot weather. These are the peppers that will produce in the summertime, unlike, at least for a zone 10. So normally peppers for me are mostly done by like June, but like a uh, uh, ahi dulce, like July, August, will be still producing, if they're, especially if they're in a semi-shade. So, you know, I'm thinking they're not as big of fans of the cold weather. Which is okay. So we definitely have some things that we need to receive. 
Oh yeah, and then the center bed. We have the spare dino kales that also don't look so great. And all my strawberries died because I over, um, <laughs> How to explain this? Normally you're supposed to like let them like rehydrate for an hour, maybe three hours. I've left them in there for two weeks. So they were like seriously questionable. I ordered more. So I do have it on my list. Well, no, I don't have it written on my list yet. We'll do that in a second. But we definitely need to go and replant the strawberries. I don't care that it's past season. I am pushing it real good. But yeah, I'm gonna push it. So, you know, consider, sometimes you do stuff really late. Who cares? Just try it. I'd rather try it. And, and what I, because, here's the thing. I got like 30 bare root things. This is only gonna hold one, two, three, four, maybe 13, 15 at most. It's gonna hold basically half. And that's with me pushing the spacing, which means I'm gonna have half left. I already offered Mr. Cliff, my neighbor, some. But also what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some and put in pots and I can keep them in warmer locations so it can kind of accelerate them. Also, a bunch of people told me they got them and within weeks already had like flowers and berries and all sorts of goodies. So whatever, I'm pushing it. So let's write down and make some notes of things we definitely, definitely need to reseed. So we need to get Texas Grano Waltham. All right, we got some lettuce. We need to do the Southwest and Northwest beds and green onions across the board. Okay, so I think we got a good, pretty good list there. Okay, let's go check on our 4th of July tomatoes that we put in this back area here. So if you remember in this section here, we planted six 4th of July's and some of them are actually, you can see the tops look terrible. They look so sad, but then we're sprouting new growth. So this might be worth keeping for now. This looks, um, oh, I think, I think that's dead. <laughs> That's dead. This one's kind of bounced back. That one's bounced back. These look pretty stressed. Those look pretty stressed. I think in general, across the board, front and back, I'm gonna be redoing tomatoes and um, it's fine. It's fine. I think we'll do some trays. So a bunch of the ones that I already talked about, I'm gonna just seed in place. It's fine. We're just gonna let that be. But the tomatoes, I will restart trays. <laughs> being much wiser, much wiser. And I think I'll redo some of the peppers and kales. The broccolis I'll restart in place. The, some of the other stuff, we'll, we'll just redo some of those in place. I think that's fine. But the tomatoes, because we got cold snaps coming through, they're warm weather crops, you know, you know, you with me on that? Okay. Yeah, so we'll do those ones in trays, but not today. So that is the back vegetable garden. But let's go take a look at how the front vegetable garden has been doing. It has been about a week two weeks since we planted our transplants and some seeds up there. As we walk to the front, I would just like you to enjoy my climbing aster. Why? Because it's not a vegetable, but it's pretty and it smells nice. And maybe you want one too. I don't know, I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Ooh, so pretty, so pretty. Okay, as we walk up here. So we have four beds up front. If you remember, lots of peppers and a bunch of tomatoes. Um, some of the tomatoes survived. Some look similar to the terrible looking ones in the back, but we won't start there. We're gonna start with carrots. Okay, and here we go. Here are the carrots. Ah, oh, look at that, they're starting out. We're doing such a good job, yay. Squirrel. And yet in spite of it, the carrots said, we shall persevere and survive in the hole. <laughs> And then I don't know what happened here. Maybe they scruffed it around because this looks like crazy. Like we, we definitely had like nice lines going on up here. And then we get back here and then it's just kind of like, I'm guessing a bird scratched through because this looks very nice in lines and then I don't know. And then this is looking like a nice line. And then I don't know, the bed's kind of collapsing. It looks like maybe they slid this way and then over here and then literally like off a cliff. <laughs> and then they're starting seeds down here. It's insane, it's okay. We will definitely add to the project list to fix the beds. That's not. That's definitely something we're gonna try to do this month. Uh, but like, yay, carrots. I didn't do the cardboard thing that everyone does. I think what really benefited me was like all the rain that was coming through every day. It just did what, you know, usually we have to manipulate around, so that helped. And if you're wondering how often I water these, because I know it's like a very fussy thing, um, only twice a week up front. Every, in the back, we were doing every day. I just switched this week to every other day. And I feel like the soil's pretty moist up there. That up here, 
because this is pretty established soil with like microbiome stuff and then we just topped it off uh only every other week but we were helped a lot by rain you know so yay for timing here now is the sweet potato bed <laughs> look at this remember how i just said like just throw them in look at all this happy new sweet potato vines so happy already trying to get out of the bed stay stay in here so many look at this and if you wanted to go make starts and propagate this to other places, this is how you could do it. But if you want to eat it, these are the leaves you want to eat. You don't want to eat them when they're like big like this. I mean, you can saute these, but they're not as nice. They're very fibery, but like this size for us, when they have the purple on it, it's kind of our key indicator, but you can see this bed's already starting to fill up. Woohoo, sweet potatoes. And then our pepper bed here. Let's see. I remember pimento petrina are on this side and oh. This one died. Why? You guessed it. Patrina. She can't. No, it's a squirrel. Squirrels again. Darn them. And in the middle here, we have our spare cubanelle, and it's also flowering, which is of interest because I think this area gets a little bit less light than up there. And this was planted weeks, three weeks after the ones in the back. So already looking healthier than the ones in the back. And then those ones were. I can't like that's banana peppers. <laughs> I like, cannot. I swear I'm not trying to forget this. Every time I go to talk about these plants, I'm always like, what is it again? Right, banana peppers. Banana peppers. Oh my gosh. I will not remember this. Okay, so we got the banana peppers. They look okay. Like they're they're okay, but they've only had like a week, maybe a week and a half since you last saw them. So we won't judge them too harshly. Now let's go to the center bed and check out what were the California wonders and the Hungarian waxes. So you can see we got this like, you know, I don't know if you can see it, it kind of looks like maybe like they're bright green on here, but honestly, this is like some of that nutrition deficiency issue. Oh, look at that. Um, that I was seeing in the back, you can see over here. So. Now that these are in here, the question is how quickly can they bounce back before they die? So we may need to just get some trays going on the, all these California wonders. They look so stressed out. And it's this yellow leafing that's telling me that. Yellow leafing can be so many things. It can be overwatering. It can be underwatering. It can be lack of nutrition. It's just like, it's all the things can be yellow leaves. So they just look stressed. So I think we need to restart California Wonders. Hungarian Waxes, on the other hand. We got a pepper. We got a flower. We got another pepper. That one just looks tiny. Oh, look, and there's the ginger I just threw back in because I was like, I don't know. Live if you want to. Oh, and apparently that's going to take over the whole bed, so you know. But Hungarian Wax Peppers, thumbs up. They look good. So we'll definitely, definitely restart some more California Wonders. Should we? Should we? Should we? Should we? I don't know. Well, 50 50 on whether we should or shouldn't. We're going to retry them. I didn't give them a good chance. They were doing actually really well. And then I just, you know, took forever to transplant everything and clean everything up. So that's on me. That's not on them. We'll try them again. Yes. And then when it comes to our tomatoes up front, well, I significantly stressed out this Everglades tomato. And yeah, it still gives me a whole, oh, look at that. I ate a whole Everglades tomato. That's really out. That thing looked really sad it was huge though I did not expect it to like <laughs> keep all its leaves and everything I probably should have pruned it down but I was lazy and I was tired at that point I've been filming and working for a lot of hours at that point so that's cool oh look more so when you yank a plant out that's actually pretty large this is what happens but honestly it's not dead it's still got a lot of green here at the bottom so so barring this doesn't die in one of the upcoming cold snaps it actually may bounce back oh and look another tomato yay yummy the other everglades tomatoes that i was super aggressively yanking out and shoving back in thank you none of you actually commented on that but i did this one's doing great this one's doing great <laughs> i was not kind to these ones um so if you feel like you're bad with tomatoes and then this one i think oh i don't even remember i think i jammed this one in broke a bunch of its roots and look at it it's still it's going now the early treats they they do not look good. Actually, I can barely find them. So we're just gonna all agree that they're they're pretty much dead. There's a ton of Puerto Rican black beans though trying to pop up everywhere, like everywhere. I won't hide the truth, there they are. Can you even see them? They look like sad little, oh, okay. Well, um, that's dead too. Um, is this dead? 
if it's not dead. It will be soon. Um, they're just, they're not doing good. We're not surprised. Are we surprised? But here's Puerto Rican black beans. And Puerto Rican black beans. <laughs> There's so many on the ground. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy. Oh, those are some of the pumpkin vines we yanked. And yes, we're foregoing those pumpkins. To get the pumpkins in the right new location, which is over there. Instead of having them run from here to there and there and back again, which is just making a mess and making it hard to maintain everything else. So, yeah. So the early treats did not transplant well, but we, we're not surprised. Are you surprised? We're not. I'm not surprised that that happened. So uh, this side looks slightly better, though Ben accidentally pulled one immediately. He was still, like, cleaning up this, and he was like, oh, look, this thing looks semi-dead, and he killed one of them immediately. But that's okay. <laughs> because I do not hide things from you guys, here is the truth. Here are what the early treats look like. My massively stressed out, oh my gosh, look at this bean. Bean, I know all you are like, give me Puerto Rican black bean plants. Uh, so here are some early treats. These ones actually look like they did okay. So this one looks okay. And then some more Puerto Rican black beans everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. But yeah, that one looks actually like it might survive. That might survive. That might survive. And okay, they're not the worst. More Puerto Rican black beans. The worst. Not great either, but by the way, you know what I mean? I, look, I tell you guys the truth. I know there's other channels that are like, I'll only show you the good things, the pretty things. And I'm like, I'll show you how I really screwed this up. I'll explain to you why I screwed it up, but I'll, I'll show it to you. I won't hide this. These ones, ooh. Okay, I'll show them, I'll show them to you. There are some more Puerto Rican black beans, but yeah, here we go. Here they are. This one put on some nice new growth, so maybe, maybe. Oh, that's so sad. <laughs> maybe. Mm, statistically unlikely. Oh, maybe. 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 I, I, I mean, maybe they'll do something, but maybe they'll just die. So I'm gonna just start new ones. <laughs> We're just gonna start new ones like this all didn't happen. And you know, they, they popped up really fast. I mean, it was warmer then, but they did pop up really fast. So. I feel okay with restarting. They'll have better root systems, better ability to like get going. So we're just gonna, you agree? I feel like you should agree with me on this one. We'll just restart them. So the Everglades, I'm totally cool with. I think they're gonna do fine on that side, but the other ones, I think I need to just restart them. And then we'll restart the California Wonder. So let's go add that to the planner. Do we want to start another pimento? We should. But Trina said they were good and it's not fair that a squirrel killed it. It's not her fault. So let's put that down. 12, 4th of July. That's terrible handwriting. Tree, we also need California Wonder times six. And then we will do a pimento. Found a stick on the ground. <laughs> Goofy girl. <laughs> So that's my vegetables. Any tips you have for me, of course I would love to hear. And if you wanna also keep track of when you plant things and when you need to fix things, uh, go ahead and pick up a planner at www.wildcloridian.net slash planner. Also, also, if you wanna see when I planted all this stuff, check out this video right here. Or if you thought to yourself, those beds, they look pretty cute. I'd like to learn more about them. Check out this video here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.